We are live. Hello, everyone. My name is Parimal, uh, producer and host for Earth is Our Witness. Welcome to yet another exciting episode where we bring in inspired photographers and storytellers from all around the world to talk stories about interconnectedness. Today is a really special topic, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we say, you know, every often uh, from people from all around the world, and today is truly international, I'll tell you why. Um, as you can tell, I'm Indian, born in India, but I live in the U.S. Uh, we have uh, my old friend, Manisha Degati, who is born in, in Iran, is a photojournalist, and is a photojournalist in exile and now lives in Italy. And in fact, we had him on Earth as a Witness to talk about Iranian revolution. And then through, you know, how one thing leads to another, he and I were talking and he said there's a very talented photographer, Solmaz, uh, who is also born in Iran, brought up in Iran, but now lives in England. And she has this amazing body of work. It's called The Eyes of Earth. And it's about a fascinating, some, I, I should say, unfortunate story of the Lake Urmia, which is one of the largest, was one of the largest saltwater lakes on the planet. And not anymore because it is fast vanishing. And he said, we should invite her and I said, that would be fantastic. And the reason for that is, obviously, I love diverse stories from all around the planet, but more so because as it's not just an environmental uh, wound on planet Earth, it is also a social and an emotional wound on the people of Iran. And both Manager and Solmars are connected to each other through Lake Urmia. And that's the story, is the vanishing of the lake and what it means environmentally, emotionally, and socially. And that's the topic today. So with that, I want to welcome you all and welcome Manager, who's the editor of that book, and Solmaz, whose photos are in that book. That's her book. And welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Great. OK, so we can get started. We have so many questions, I'm sure. And uh, Solmaz, if you want to start sharing, and Manager, I will let you lead the conversation with Solmaz because you clearly are also connected to Lake Urmia. And as you share, Solmaz, a quick question to both of you. What about Lake Urmia? How are you connected to Lake Urmia in the Azerbaijan region of Iran? Well, I will start. I was born in Urmia city, which is like a few kilometers from the Lake Urmia. And uh, well, as being an Azer from Azerbaijan and living there, uh, Lake Urumia for us was like uh, going to, you know, Nice or, or, you know, for our vacations. It was like a landmark which unites us even. We would mm. go, not only my family, I remember for vacations, we would go with my family, with my cousins, with my uncles, like make a whole tribe and go stay by the shores of this lake, which is a very unique place in the world. Hmm. was, I mean, it still is, because, I mean, it was kind of, you would spend some time in summer there, you know, bathing there, and uh, putting mud on ourselves, and, and, you know, being, it was, it was a center to gather all, you know, the family and, and all the people there to enjoy their life, because it's, hmm. you know, especially in the lake, a, a salty lake, you never get drawn. You always float on that uh, mm -hmm. water. So it's, it's a very nice feeling. And plus it has, you know, it had also its own environment. People, the, the, the farmers, the people who, who live there, who, who live from their, you know, their, their farming, the their tourism coming there. It was the whole ambience, which unfortunately, uh, you, I, I will tell a few just, to, to let you know about this lake, which was the great, the biggest lake in the in the Middle East, mm. and the, one of the biggest uh, salt water lakes in the world. So, and it had two thousand square meter uh, square kilometer of, of surface, which was huge. And mm. unfortunately, in after the Iranian Revolution, the for mismanagement and for greed of people, they built a lot of uh, stand, uh, uh, dams around the, 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 the lake and it start to shrink. Now a day, this lake 
has lost 60% of its, its surface mm. and only it remains 5% of the water it had. It's mm. unbelievable. Mm. It's 90% of the water which was filled this uh, lake has been disappeared. Okay, it's not only about water disappearing because it has made disappear the whole ambience around it, the whole you know, tradition it was around it. People who were living there, who were living from tourism, from agriculture, or the people who were going there, like myself, I have incredible, my best, let's say, uh, souvenirs of my childhood is this, the time you spend around that lake. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this has disappeared and, and this new generation had, don't have this, you know, this time opportunity to enjoy this, this beauty of what we, we uh, you know, as child uh, experience. And that's Thanks. the incredible mismanagement of the Iranian government. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Solmaz to you. Uh, anything you want to add before our, we, we show the images? And I know you have a lot of stories to share as well. Yes. Uh, actually, I, I can uh, explain uh, why I'm presenting the work. But my story also is very similar to Manacher's story. I am also born on the other in, a, in another city on the other side of the lake. And I can explain more while I'm showing the presentation. That's good. Yeah, it's coming up if you want to go full screen. I mean, I have to add something about Solma's story because it's not only about photojournalism, it's also that she's personally involved in this story. She's telling the story of this lake a travail of her grandmother, her grandmother who lived there, who planted thousands of trees, which all these trees dried, you know, and she witnessed all this. This is a very important point that mm. she'll tell us about. Got it. Yes. Uh, so, okay. Uh, as also Manu Chair explained, uh, the story is that uh, the lake uh, was uh, like kind of one of the biggest salt lake on the planet. And it was some say second largest in, mid, uh, in planet and some say that sixth uh, largest uh, salt lake on planet. And since three decades ago, it started shrinking. And there are many factors uh, that contributed, like uh, caused this uh, catastrophe. Uh, and the main one is that, uh, it is very simple, actually, it's not very uh, complicated. The main one is that the human withdrawal from the water basin around the lake, it was uh, um, a lot of withdrawal of water, so it caused this uh, like the water that was going to the lake was less than uh, it should be. So it was simple. At the same time, complicated. But uh, the simply explained reason is this one. So this uh, story is both environmental and um, personal story for me uh, because I lived uh, my actually I didn't born around the lake, but uh, I was born in Tabriz city, 50 kilometers around the lake. But my grandparents, like on, on my mother's side, all my family on my mother's side, they were born and raised in a port just right uh, beside the lake. It was a touristic um, port called Sharafhane, and uh, my grandfather and my grandparents, uh, my uncles, all were connected like their jobs and their life also. So in the, you can see that how in these three decades, like especially from 2000 to 2014, mm -hmm. uh, how this lake uh, changed uh, to uh, started drying. So this is uh, uh, one of the photos that I, I don't have like uh, that many photos from my childhood beside the lake. It could be like two, three photos that my father took. And I'm lucky that my father liked taking pictures and not only from family member, but also nature. And this caused that and he had a, this small Zenit camera. Uh, 
and he was taking picture both my uncle and also my father they were taking pictures from the lake something that you know was the most important maybe thing in their life because they were seeing it every time they are you know every weekend we were we were going to my grandparents house and all the summers i was insisting my parents that i should stay in my grandparents because i had a lot of freedom so in this picture uh, the girl in the white and black dress it's me uh, and yes That's cute yeah <laughs> and uh, and this is uh, the place that we used to walk and we had all the time like every week or especially in summers my grandparents house was full of, with guests that some of them we didn't even know they were coming from like far and nearby cities because this place was so attractive. Good weather, they could go swimming. There were, especially my mom says that before revolution, there was even after revolution, I, I, there were you know people coming and singing and playing musical instruments. So uh, it was a, a place that you know people, even though that they didn't weren't close to this place. Everyone who came here had a very good memory leaving this area. And uh, I need to uh, say that there weren't many ports around the lake. It was two or three, that, and Sharapone port was one of the most important touristic ones. Actually, I don't have a picture of my childhood by the lake. I don't know why. Maybe the photography was not invented yet when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to explain uh, a bit about the book. I started this project uh, uh, when the lake was in its worst situation in 2014. And it is my first ever project. I started photography with this story. Uh, and I took my first images around the lake because like my father and uncle, this was the only environment attractive and known to me. Uh, I, before this, I wasn't traveling a lot because of, you know, uh, kind of um, not restrictions, but it was kind of hard for uh, women to, uh, young women to, uh, uh, to uh, travel alone uh, and, uh, you know, um, take pictures and not many photographers, women photographers are, um, I knew. So uh, my biggest wish was that this long term project, which I started in 2014, become as a book. And but I never thought that it would be like so early. I was thinking that it will be, you know, maybe 10 years later or maybe. Uh, I don't know. It was a really, really big wish of mine. Uh, and uh, I just participated in uh, the Photo Evidence Women Award, which was it in its second year. And I got this um, uh, amazing grant to uh, make my story uh, as a book. So um, this uh, award is devoted to women photographers who work on their personal stories. That's, uh, that's wonderful. And is that is that the Magnum grant or a different grant? What grant? Uh, no, the, no, no, uh, this is just a photo evidence a women award. Got it. Very nice. Yeah. And it is supported I, by... Actually, I, I, I forgot to talk about this issue, how Solmaz is printing a book, you know. It's about Svetlana and David from the Photo Evidence Organization yeah. who gave this opportunity to a new generation of photographers to win a prize and they published their picture. Photo Evidence is an incredible organization which yeah. helps you know, the, the young generation of photographers. Wonderful, that's wonderful. Exactly, and this is how uh, uh, in person I uh, know Manu Cher. Of course, uh, I knew Manu Cher before, I know his work and he's a, a well-known, world-known editor and photographer. Of course, I knew him, but uh, I didn't uh, had the chance to uh, talk to him in person or uh, you know, and it was an um, honor to um, uh, that him uh, manage editing this work. Yeah, we have also, we both have a personal attachment to that, which yeah. makes great about this story also that, you know, I edited the photo of Salmaz, who, because I'm an exile, I cannot even go to Iran. So for me, yeah. it was like 
you know, going back there with looking yeah. at some mass picture, it was really, it's really great. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, my father was taking picture from, from the lake and this is the biggest luck I think for this story. Uh, this picture is taken by my father in 1992. Uh, from, this is the beach of the uh, Lake Urmia uh, in Sharaf Khanaport and that structure there is made uh, like by Russians and it is a structure used to uh, repair ships. And it was like eight meters, around eight meters, uh, like under water. Uh, like the, the height of the water was eight meters. Mm -hmm. So it, it was called tall. It, it is a Russian word, which I don't know the meaning. Uh, and uh, this is just, a, if you look at this, this is just a picture uh, that uh, just, uh, you know, from the beach and a simple one. But uh, years later, uh, it, in the next slide, you will see that how lake changed from mm. that to this. Wow, that's um, unfortunate. That's a yes. shocking uh, before and after. Yes, exactly. Uh, actually, uh, I uh, the thing is that I discovered these pictures of my father. Uh, I didn't intend to add these ones. I, I wasn't even aware of uh, these pictures. It just uh, like one year ago, I just, uh, I was uh, in a trip. I go regularly to Iran. I was in a trip and I looked to uh, the family albums like two years ago, I think. Yeah, two years ago. Uh, so I just saw that my father has a lot of pictures from the lake in between our family or, you know, some other weddings pictures. And I realized that uh, suddenly I realized that, oh, I have this picture from the same spot and I should make uh, this, um, uh, this, you know, combine these uh, two images and add uh, the family pictures mm -hmm. to, to show that how it was before and how after and how it changed during time to give a, you know, um, um, a bigger perspective that uh, would mm -hmm. happen. So well said. This is the same. Uh, the first images are about, I, I just want to those who don't know how it was like, because when you were, you are talking about some spot, you know, you don't have, uh, um, because you don't know how it was before. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't know, um, you can't just imagine how it changed. Uh, I just tried uh, to show that how it was before and, and how it changed after that. This, pl uh, this uh, place is also uh, where my uncles who were sailors at the time, one of my uncles uh, were a, a math teacher, but at the same time he was making boats and uh, with, mother, with other uncle and they were rent giving uh, for rent the pedal boats and also uh, the other wooden boats. So uh, this picture shows Sharaf Khan port uh, in um, summer and people coming. And, uh, and there was a, a separate place for women also to swim, but this is the men's part. Hmm. Oh, wow. So this is almost the um, same spot. Wow, very, uh, very sad. Yes. Mm. I think around like 10 kilometers, it's, it's just right around 10 kilometers. You know, it, it's interesting. I like the way you did the before and after old photos and also, you know, some of them taken by your father and after, because it almost takes a significant passage of time to see the contrast, because even though it's changing every day, you don't see it unless you see it between a long period of time to see the contrast. Exactly, it's like more than 40 years, this distance between the yeah. previous photo and this one. Yeah, I mean, this is only one generation passed because, yeah. you know, the environmental things can happen. You know, maybe lakes, you know, dry or forests burn, whatever. But mm. seeing this, which was made by it's a man-made uh, problem, not even nature. The nature didn't do this. Man yeah. made this horrible mistake. 
to to you know to to arrive to this point which <coughs> which you see in before and after mm. it's very yeah unbelievable what i wanted to add um, to this um after um one of the main reasons that, uh, you know, I, I don't always want to single out one reason for the catastrophe that happened for this uh, desperate thing that happened. But one of the main reasons, as I told you, was the uh, huge water withdrawal from the basin, river, the, those rivers coming to the lake. And the reason, reason for this was that after Iran-Iraq war, uh, the country was torn. And uh, the government was trying to, you know, be independent and food secure. Uh, also, after this, um, after revolution, uh, this thing happened. Um, the population blooming, like, mm. uh, yeah, the, I, even they were. Uh, the government was encouraging people to bring children, uh, and there were like mottos and. Um, it is my generation that came <laughs> uh, after revolution, which we had a lot of problems, like finding jobs, going to university, uh, demanding for you know food. And that's the thing that happened. One of the reasons that this mm. high demand of water for the agriculture, because 90% of this uh, water goes to agriculture and the dams that is around the lake are for the agriculture. You know? Uh, not ninety-five uh, percent are for agriculture. So uh, this is what happened. Uh, actually, we can also add that this is a consequence of a war, a eight-year uh, war uh, that not only lost many lives for both sides, but also we can see that uh, the backdrop what happened uh, after that. Mm. It's a it's a very important point. You know, is the long-term consequences is what we call the second order effects, the third order effects, the fourth order effects of something that happens like a war. And generations later, everyone is still paying the price. Certainly, there are you know, a lot of different reasons we can find for yeah. this you know, disaster. But yeah. the main thing is mismanagement. Exactly, you know? water mismanagement. And water mismanagement was the, the main reason. There are others, of course, even there was, you know, it wasn't raining in Iran for, uh, you know, it was becoming dry. This is another- uh, Exactly, you know, climate the, the reasons, change. Climate change. But the main thing is the mismanagement. <laughs> yeah, actually it's not kind of a simple answer to the, such a huge issue. And it's complex. a mix of complex and mix of uh, problems, mix of sure. reasons. Uh, the, uh, when I, when I re this picture was very interesting for me. This is the launch of uh, Noah Ark. Um, and uh, in, the, in the back of this photo with a very good uh, handwriting, it writes that uh, this is the launch of this, uh, uh, you know, the ship. And uh, many of those people uh, were born in, in the Sharafana port and uh, they lived their whole life there and they were going with this, uh, they were the crew of this ship and going between especially Urmia city and Tabriz city, uh, this Sharafana port and Golman Khana port around the lake. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, Big contrast. Yes. So, um, as I told you, this is also a very personal story for me. Everything for me actually started um, uh, from inside, from my grandmother, my grandparents. Uh, because at, this, uh, at that time, there were many other photographers also working on this uh, project beca because it was a really, really big issue uh, in Iran's environment. Uh, so there were more experienced and very powerful photographers working on this uh, project, Lake Urmia project, and they have also very uh, great stories and great pictures. Uh, 
at, at that time, I was thinking that, uh, what can I do that? Uh, what can, I, because I was seeing those pictures and I was seeing that, oh, they, they are very powerful and, uh, um, it, okay, what if I repeat the same story? So I just, I, I just, I was just searching for something very close to me to look at this story from a different, uh, you know, um, corner from different uh, perspective. So I started taking pictures from my grandparents because uh, they were the, the most um, close people to me and to the lake. They mm -hmm. lived like a more than half a century, more than half a century. Uh, around in that port and uh, their uh, jobs their lives everything were connected uh, to lake so I started taking pictures from my grandparents they at that time that I started um, the, my, my grandfather's uh, as in my grandfather's um, guest house uh, was in ruins and it didn't exist it. but um, my grandmother made that place uh, to a garden so she was going time to time there and she has also very um, strong connection to the um, to environment and she was working all the time all her life with uh, plants uh, gardens trees and uh, yeah this is her you know house uh, and mm -hmm. even here every corner of the house even though that she had gardens everywhere was full of plants and Yes, everything for me started with my grandmother and um, she, uh, I lost her um, uh, eight months ago uh, because of COVID. Oh, I'm uh, so Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks very much. Uh, and I went to Iran and it was, uh, it, it was really hard for me to lo lose her and it's still it is hard. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm also very happy that um, I had grandmother because many don't have it or lose it earlier, but I learned a lot from her. And yeah. I should add to that that she planted like hundreds of trees, more than 800, uh, as my uncle just counted them in the garden in her wow. lifetime. Yeah. Wow, it runs in the blood. Both photography and care for the environment runs in the blood. Actually, this is the really strength point of Salma's story. It's not only about a photojournalist's story, but she's telling her own story and her grandmother and family who really uh, rise there, grow up there, and how their life changed because of this uh, catastrophe which happened to the, to the lake. So that is really important when we, you know, we photojournalists, we tell a lot of stories from around the world. But once, like myself, I had a few personal stories to tell, which were really, I thought, they, for me, uh, were also most, uh, very important to put really importance on that because it's real, a real story. Because mm. it's a story I lived, I'm living it, my relatives are living. So this makes the strength point of Solomon's story also. Yeah. Uh, in this picture, this is um, my uh, grandfather's uh, guest house, which doesn't look like a guest house. Um, my grandfather uh, made uh, this place like first they were just tents that they were uh, he, he was uh, renting to uh, the people who were coming uh, to the lake. And then uh, piece by piece and uh, he just uh, made this place. Uh, with the help of my uncles. It was a really, a, a very big area, a big place, uh, a back garden and some uh, um, shops uh, in beside it. Uh, but uh, after, you know, years, uh, like in 20 years, it just became in, it just, uh, in ruins. But uh, he, he, I also lost him two years ago. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing about him was that he was always, always hopeful that lake will come back. Like always, whenever it was raining yeah, in the in um, winter or in, in um, fall, he was saying that, oh, do you think that uh, it, it will make a difference? Uh, will lake come forward? Wow. Uh, and 
uh, every year he was going, also that there, there weren't anyone, <laughs> no one was coming. And as you can see, it's like this. He was going, you know, sitting there as he used, because he, he was there more, more than, he had this job for more than 50 years. Mm. And it's very hard. And he made many friends, uh, those uh, travelers who were coming there. It wasn't, sometimes he was uh, bringing some guests uh, to home, like 20 people to my grandmother's home, because this is guest house and the home is in, this, in the town. So we didn't know, even know them. You know, they were mm. some strangers that he, you know, liked them and he was bringing them home. So he was making friends. It wasn't like only a job for him. It was a passion and he, he really loved it. And even though that it, it was like this, uh, every summer he was going and sitting there doing some, you know, repairing some windows, doing some stuff. Mm. It's good to keep hope in life. Yeah. Hope in hope. I, I, you just said that hope hope is a good thing hope keeps us alive um and this is the same place um in in summer uh, which is turned to kind of garden uh, and this uh, sun boots uh, are made by um, kind of handmade by my uncle and uh, mm -hmm. He just uh, designed them and uh, he, uh, he was in Japan uh, for this thing. And he, he was really interesting to, uh, about designing things, make, making things uh, himself. So after coming back from Japan, he uh, made these um, uh, different shapes of uh, pedal boats and he put them uh, on the uh, lake. So, but it was of course before lake is starting shrinking. I love this image. You know, I'd seen this before. I'll tell you why I like about this is it, it in some way shows the contrast because uh, you have this beautiful, you know, shape, very modern looking, very cool and hip for those times, a paddle boat that shows, represents the glory that the lake had. Yeah. And then his expression, right? Yeah. Uh, it shows the current status, the current state, which is not very good. And also the kind of the, the head of the swan and, and his head both going down. There's a, I, there's, a, there's a sadness to it and there's a beauty to it at the same time. Yeah, actually, there are many of these boats in different colors and we didn't know where to put them. So it's around like 10, 15 uh, swan boats in different colors and um, different even shapes. It's not just swan, there are other shapes too. So... Uh, as I told you, it's a big place. So uh, there were all over uh, this guest house. Yeah. As, as you can see, they are broken and yeah, uh, still there. It's this another place, beautiful image. Okay. Um, do you, actually, it was this uh, project was also a process of discovering my own environment and you know ethnic group because uh, uh, the most people who are living around the lake are turkic azeris uh, we speak uh, um, turkish language and also uh, like uh, this is an ethnic group in the region uh, both in Ur ormia city and also other villages like tabri city and uh, sharapanaport we we don't speak persian of course we speak persian but uh, the mother tongue is um, uh, Turkish, uh, Azer Azeri Turkish. Uh, so it was also a um, process of discovering my own environment and ethnic group uh, during this um, uh, project because mm -hmm. I decided to not only um, after a while, after two years uh, in 2017 uh, 16, I decided not to only focus on my family but go and discover similar stories. Uh, in the towns and especially villages around the lake. Mm. So this is a very close a village to my grandparents' town. And this place, as you can see, the structures in the background, this place used to be a like a um, holiday village mm. uh, for many employees of uh, petrochemical employees, like many government employees that uh, they were giving these places to come and spend their holidays. And it was a really, really beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And these people are just local people living uh, uh, in, the, in the village. 
uh, and they are visiting. Every Friday, um, uh, people go and visit uh, those who are dead, those loved ones who are dead. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Friday that women from the village come to, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, say prayers and uh, visit to those who dead some of the graveyards of those who are dead. You know, even visually, uh, the women and those windows, there's, uh, there's some symmetry there. Was that, was that conscious when you took this image? That those windows and the women, they almost look like they're talking to each other. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, uh, it wasn't conscious. It was, uh, I was just very much attracted by uh, the chadors, the covers that mm -hmm. they are wearing, uh, yeah. because uh, it, all of them were colorful. And there is a very interesting uh, point that uh, in cities, Iran cities, you can see a uh, different uh, people wearing different clothes. Uh, you know, the variety is like huge. But in villages, Iranian villages, uh, women usually have these colorful shadows with different uh, textures because it is usually more religious and it is usually more, you know, yeah. uh, limited environment. And um, it was uh, very interesting for me to see that, uh, you know, um, the different textures that uh, there is in their shadows. Uh, but uh, the windows and women, it wasn't intentional. And uh, by the way, this place, this place is a, uh, internet, uh, as you can see, there is a railway, and this is the Iran Turkish, uh, the, only, oh. the only Iranian Turkish railway, international railway, and this is a rail station. But uh, it, I think, uh, it won't stop here mm. because I think no one goes to the, this place. You use the term, uh, what do you call the dress? Chadar? Chador. Chador, uh, we have a actually uh, very similar, same word, I'm sure same roots in Indian, in multiple Indian languages, actually. In uh, Hindi, we call it Chadar. Okay. And, and, and in my native language, Marathi, in Maharashtra, we call it Chadar. Oh. Chadar. Oh. Chadar. Okay. It's, yeah. it's interesting, you know. That same, same roots, same, yeah. Same roots. Beautiful. And um, I, I, this picture was really accidental. Uh, as always, uh, like um, I was uh, wandering around the lake in weekends, like uh, Thursdays and um, Fridays. So uh, I was um, between uh, two villages, Sharp Honeport and the same one in previous picture. And a group of uh, school boys came with a minibus uh, with their teacher. Uh, and they were coming from um, Tabri city uh, to visit the lake. <laughs> but as there weren't no lake, and you can see just uh, there is a little bit of reflection, just uh, like maybe, um, I don't know, half centimeter water uh, on the ground. So uh, they started playing and uh, it was very interesting scene, uh, so surreal seeing. It was, it was no one around, just me and these kids playing. Mm, yeah. And this place was full of water. Like um, maybe uh, for th this is not far from my grandparents' town and uh, that touristic town, and uh, it's um, it was like maybe four three meters of water in this place. Uh, yeah, but in the same time, it shows that how little water is there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Before there was maybe several meter of water here, but now mm. there's only a few centimeters, a few inches. This is a very haunting image. Uh, this is the same place that women with Chador were there. And as to, I told you, this was a, a like holiday village. And this mm. is a tea house, very, like very huge um, tea house. It was, uh, I think, um, it, it was looking very beautiful. And uh, I saw the uh, water lines j just right uh, beside this uh, tea house. So it was a waterfront um, and this bench and everything. There were some, um, it was very haunted. <laughs> it was like a ghost house, mm. uh, but it was at the same time, very beautiful. And uh, this place was, uh, 
like a meditation like while I was taking um, the pictures of the lake imagine I was all alone in a mid and there was no sound just a sound of the some bird or maybe uh, wind and um, it was kind of I, I was really really enjoying doing this um, photography it was kind of meditation for me it was um, just um, me and they want that's that's why that I had uh, the all the time that I wanted to take pictures and take uh, what I really want. Mm. Can I a uh, question for you, Solma? You use the word meditation and enjoyment right now, yeah. and yet the subject is a little sad, right? Because uh, of what it used to be. How do you? How do you? How can you be in one space of something that you're documenting? is not as good anymore and at the same time enjoy your craft and the meditation at the same time yeah uh, actually it's an interesting question uh, but the answer is that i can't say really i didn't enjoy because it is still very very beautiful because even though it, that it is sad at the same time it is really beautiful because uh, there is like um, this desert of um, salt and it is a unique, it creates a unique nature with some small hills of uh, salt in here and there in the lake, small ponds. And sometimes you see a flower going around and sometimes you see um, a bird, hearing a bird, just a lonely bird and mm. no, hearing nothing else, no human around. So um, I think at the same time that it was very, very sad but it was beautiful. And uh, I, I believe that everyone that goes there, uh, like my friends or some other, I don't know, film directors, uh, uh, anyone who visited, even though that it was sad, it was also beautiful for them too. Thank you. Yeah, That's I mean, you know, in, for example, talking of this picture, I'm usually against photos which have no human or animal elements. You know, I want to have some symbolism of life but this picture has nothing is empty but it gives you the message it, it tells you how you know this place has been abandoned this place was a great uh, tea house hundreds of people maybe there before sitting here sleeping their 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 tea with, with the water in front of them but i mean putting this picture emptiness gives you the, the message, which, which I think it, work, it works very well in this case, actually. It does, it does. Even the, and the wooden bench. Exactly. It, it now, I, I, this wooden bench, I'll tell you what I read. This is a beautiful image. And I, I love what you said, manager, about why this image still works, you know, and is beautiful because you still have the sun and the natural elements, you know, the sky. They are there, almost saying, we didn't do this. Um, and then you have the bench that's empty and sort of place in ruins. So something's missing. Something that was is not anymore. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and the interesting thing is that uh, everything was like there inside this place. Uh, it has doors, win windows, everything, but it's open. All uh, yeah. win the windows are broken and the uh, curtains, white curtains with the wind going around. And this bench, I think, it was. It belonged to this place. Nobody, uh, you know, brought it here. Uh, and uh, when you go inside this tea house, um, it is those curtains. Those, you know, um, there are other benches. It was really uh, because I already saw the uh, the years and the moments that the lake was full and full of people and enjoyment. So mm. it was like I could hear this chanting, yeah. I could hear this um, like um, existence while it, it didn't exist. Yeah, the bench is very, very symbolic. Uh, I, this picture, I really like it. I didn't uh, take this picture with my camera. Actually, I took some pictures with the camera, but that day I lost my memory card and uh, I couldn't find that memory card anymore. So I, 
I had this only picture in my, um, I took with my mobile phone. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I always had in my edit. <laughs> also, the mm-hmm. quality is not very good. Uh, this is very um, symbolic picture for me. It's, uh, uh, you know, this uh, boat is um, uh, on the way going to uh, Umia uh, in, in a bridge, Chait Kalantari bridge, which it is also considered as one of the reasons that, uh, you know, change the ecosystem of the lake because it is, uh, on middle of the lake and it uh, it was built by drawing uh, many kilometers of uh, many places of the lake at the same mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it uh, it made the lake in two half northern part south part and sometimes it uh, just uh, prevented the natural flow of the lake between uh, two parts so when people going between two cities Tabriz, this is made uh, to make also this is made in, uh, after in war time to make the community this commuting between Tabriz city and the strategic place like Urmia city um, mm. easier. So uh, every time that people come and go, you can see uh, th- this boat also it is grounded and uh, they don't use it. But uh, people just come and visit um, uh, when g- going the, between this, and it's never empty. <laughs> Hmm, it's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, this this is uh, this um, the picture that I have in mind from my childhood. Uh, like I was in when I was in her age. Uh, this is what always had um, from in my mind, like going to lake, uh, putting on my. A swim to it and uh, going, um, uh, you know, just uh, swimming and coming back uh, to my grandparents' house exhausted and uh, they were spoiling me. Uh, so this, this is very uh, symbolic picture for me uh, that I'm sure that these kids really enjoying. And uh, those uh, containers that you see, uh, mm-hmm. people just uh, <coughs> uh, pour it with uh, salt water and uh, take it home to use it in, you know, I don't know, in maybe bath or, uh, you know, a salt, take a salt bath or I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> hmm. Because it is those mud, uh, it is believed that uh, to have like uh, minerals and good yes. for... Good know, for the skin. skin. Yes. That's why that people cover themselves in mud. Yeah, I could have been that boy, exactly, you know. Uh, yeah. This is my, also my, my memory of childhood, the same, seeing people putting mud on themselves, me jumping in the water and burning my eyes, you know, because that water was really, really salty. If the water went into your eyes, it would really burn badly. Mm. And I remember when we went in the water, we all carry a cucumber. Cucumber, yeah. (laughs) So once the water went to your eyes, we would split the cucumber and, and, and put on our eyes. So that would absorb the salt huh. from your eyes. And then you would eat it. It was so tasty, also yeah. salty, the cucumber. <laughs> yeah, so we were taste, doing the same. That taste is in my mouth. You know, after seven, 60 years, I still feel that that cucumber salted with the lake water in my mouth, yeah. You know, in fact, on Facebook, one of my friends, Mehdi, uh, who actually is also from Iran, but lives here in Seattle, he said the same thing in the comment, is he remembers traveling there as kids and then putting cucumber slices when the salt would go in the eyes. Exactly. I didn't know about yeah. eating that afterwards, you know, which is double, double bonus. Of course. <laughs> Uh, this is a tea house also in a village. Uh, you know, in a small village, there's not much entertainment for people. Uh, so in the evening, men um, uh, after work, and uh, most of them farmers, uh, after work, they come to these ha- uh, tea houses, uh, these traditional tea houses, which I myself uh, never been to uh, before starting this, uh, mm-hmm. this, this uh, project. Um, so it was uh, kind of my first time to be a tea house of a, a village. Uh, 
And uh, it was really interesting. That I, I was uh, interviewing with this, uh, the owner of the here, and he was telling me that uh, uh, not many people are coming because everybody migrated to the Urmia city because this village is close to that. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, because uh, this village was very close to the lake and uh, when lake started drying, those salt winds were coming uh, and sitting on the soil and the leaves. So agriculture kind of suffered in that region and many people migrated to Urmia and Tabriz and other cities around it. Got it. I, 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 I don't know how this happened. Um, this and uh, this, um, oh, sorry. Uh, this is the um, same in background. This is the same um, bridge that I was talking. Uh, mm. that it also was considered one of the reasons uh, that um, changed the ecosystem of the lake. Um, this is a, a, a kind of newly made uh, uh, statue, like two years ago, they made it in, the, in Sharaf Khana port. Um, uh, many birds lived around the lake uh, and many migratory birds like pelicans, uh, flamingos, many, and many other birds. Uh, and one of the wonders of living in this port, uh, in this environment, was that I could uh, see uh, bird migration from uh, those birds, uh, both seeing the bird migration and seeing the birds itself. They were coming uh, to the beach very close to people, and you could see them. And uh, also they were flying thousands of them. And I was watching when I was in my grandparents and I was watching them, uh, you know, migrating. Uh, so the flamingo is the symbol of the lake because uh, they were coming uh, to the lake um, uh, to um, to stay and uh, mm -hmm. and they were feeding of those small algae and uh, brine shrimp. Uh, but after lake shrinking, some years, uh, they, maybe for five, six years or 10 years, we didn't see any of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But recently I hear, I've heard uh, that in uh, some pounds a lot around the lake, they are coming because uh, in recent years, uh, the lake is starting, um, started a bit recovering. Um, and there was a lake restoration program by uh, government and also uh, with UNDP. Uh, mm. So it, it st started reviving, but if they don't continue to do this, it will uh, come back. Uh, it will uh, just start drying out. Mm. This is the last picture. Um, and um, this is also um, uh, what I like about it is about how little we are uh, when compared to our yeah. nature, but how big damages we can do to it. Oh, look, yeah, very well said. Very well said, Thomas. Let's say that again, how little we are compared to nature. <laughs> Yes, and here you, in picture, it is. I'm not very far from uh, these people, but uh, this, you can see that we are very little compared to the size of the lake because it's a really big lake. Even it started drying out, it was so big that even uh, when uh, even with this size of shrinking, we are uh, still can see that how huge the lake is, but how little we are, and but how big damages we can do to this. That's well said. Thanks for uh, sharing these images. If you if you want, you can close. I do have a few questions yes. for you and, and to manage her as well. Okay. Thank you. Thanks again. That was wonderful. To both of you. Thank you so much. Um, tell us a bit about the book and uh, where people can, people can, if you want, pre-order the book. And also why the name of the, the book, The Eyes of Earth? It's a very interesting name. Uh, yes. Um, uh, first, I will explain uh, where you can get it. You can get pre-order. Actually, it will be out soon in uh, two weeks, three weeks, I think. And you can get it in the photo evidence website. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And uh, why I named it the Eyes of Earth? Actually, when I was um, uh, thinking about the name for this project, I started thinking about the name after one year that I started. I didn't decide, I, I, I didn't have any title in my mind for this story. But I read a quote from uh, an American writer that uh, it was telling that, and it was very random. Uh, I was searching uh, to um, see uh, uh, some, um, you know, some to, uh, to see that what really sits on my heart. So uh, I start, I saw this quote and it was uh, uh, this, that uh, the lake, uh, when we look at a lake, the lakes are eyes of the earth. And when we look at the lake, we see ourselves. This is, of course, simplified. We see ourselves. So I just thought that, OK, this is me. Uh, mm. This is exactly what I want to say. Uh, this connection that I have with the lake, this very, very strong memories that I have, uh, this, uh, that uh, shaped my personality because uh, mm. I grew up in that environment. Uh, I started biking for the first time in that beside the lake. I started taking pictures beside the lake. I started you know, reading everything. I was very free. I couldn't do those things uh, in my own city in Tabriz, but I have uh, a lot of freedom because everybody know my grandparents and my family. So I, I was roaming around freely. So I think this shaped my personality. That's why the lake was so important for me. And the title comes from there. Mm. It's wonderful. Question to both of you. You are both photojournalists. Um, Obviously, Manichur, you have had decades of experience, you know, and going back to Iranian revolution, Iran, Iran, walk, you know, and so, so much. Uh, what does it take to become a successful photojournalist? What's the one thing you would say, do this or make sure you don't do this? Well, photojournalism is about telling stories. When you feel, you have to feel and understand a story and find it. First find it, understand it, and then work on it to transmit to the others. This is a successful uh, photojournalist is to tell the right stories on the right time, or to be on the right uh, place on the right time, the same thing, or finding like this uh, environmental problem is not only uh, in Iran now, it's, it's, it's a global uh, problem. It can be by environmental problems or man-made problems, but it's the huge problem all over the world. Now you have a lot of places who are being dry or uh, turned into deserts because of either mismanagement or environmental. So this should be the, I think that the, that's why a story can be a uh, uh, let's say interesting and important because we are telling, we are focusing on the stories that mm. makes a change, you know, like bringing awareness in environmental stories, very important, you know, using, non using plastic, all, the, you know, all these kind of things that we have to, as photojournalists, to, to, you know, concentrate on that and pass the message, message to hoping it will have a positive, uh, you know, effect on our society. Mm. Exactly. Salmaz, anything to add? Um, actually, uh, uh, something that I wanted to add is that um, I'm still learning. And, uh, uh, but something that I, it is very important for me in, in this uh, way is to be really, really passionate about what I'm working and really care about the subject that I'm working and uh, get connected with that. Uh, because uh, I believe that if I don't get connected, uh, really feel it, uh, uh, it won't be good at the end and it won't have the um, outcome that I really want. Uh, mm -hmm. So when I, uh, I can say that, how to be a successful photojournalist, but um, how to really enjoy what you're doing and how, uh, uh, how may also um, make people feel the same that you're feeling and working on is uh, just, uh, in my opinion, to 
be passionate about what you're doing about the story. Mm. Um, last two questions as we wrap this up. In one word, what is the one quality, Solmaz, you admire in manager? And manager, same question for you about Solmaz, in one word. Uh, I think it's honest work. I really admire his really, really honest work. And I really admire that he kind of documenting Iran's history, like very, very um, important part of Iran's history. Well, also Solmaz, to choose the right story because of having not only important as a story, but having a connection, personal, uh, you know, kind of storytelling, which adds, is an added value. So I also wanted to tell you, if you want to know me better, there's a book about my life called I, I Witness. I yeah. You can find it on Amazon. It's about a story of half a century of my adventure, you know, whatever happened, because I, I really, I witnessed a lot in the last 50 years around the world. So I'm photographed, of course. So all the stories I'm telling in this book, they are true. Nothing is invented. You might not believe, but it's true. Wow. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get both yeah, these. Too. Yeah, one final question as we wrap this up. And again, before I do that, as a reminder again, uh, check out both books, Manager's book, Eyewitness. Show us that book again, Eyewitness. That's documenting his own real stories in, you know, um, about Iran. And that's on Amazon. And Solmaz's book is coming out soon, but you can pre-order on Photo Evidence website. It's called The Eyes of World. And the link is in the talks, both on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, as we wrap this up, last question to both of you. Given this conversation, what's the one message you would have to all of us? starting with you, manager, and then ending with you, Solmaz. Well, despite all I have seen in my life, I always keep hope, no matter what. I go to the bottom of uh, existence, but I keep hope. I keep hope also for Lake Oromia. I'm sure one day we will make it. We will make it uh, live again, that lake. So there is hope always, and I believe in that. We'll pass the sad times, we'll go down, but we have to always think ahead and be hopeful. Great. Uh, and for me, I think that it's the same, like being really, really hopeful. And I, sometimes I believe that I'm uh, very much hopeful for um, um, for the things around me, not both personal and both the work that I'm doing, but I, I agree with Manu Chair. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. You know, it reminds me, uh, a key theme here is about hope. Uh, there is a saying in our Indian language in Hindi, Umid pe dunya kaayam hai. Umid. Umid is hope. Umid is hope. Pe dunia kaayam hai. The whole world rests on hope, you know. Actually, uh, I understood hope. the whole sentence. It's wonderful. It's wonderful how so many things in common between our cultures. Yes. Right? Yes. Great. With that, I want to thank uh, our audience and then thank uh, both of you. You know, uh, I just enjoy doing this and it's so heartwarming to hear, you know, you talk with so much passion, Solmaz, and uh, with Manager add your wisdom to the, to the conversation with your decades of experience so thanks to thanks to both of you thank you thank you very much thank you for having us Parimal, really thank you that you are organizing you are doing a great great job for photography in the world thank you thank you thank you